I'm Zach, and welcome to the Malibuta Movement. And this is my friend, former pro surfer, CC Beckloff. There you go. Beckloff. So uh, let's just start with uh, where we are. We're in Port Huaynimi right now in Oxnard, and uh, we're in CC's backyard where he's been living for how long? Four years. Four years, and he's originally from Huntington Beach. Sin City, baby. And you used to be pro for Quicksilver and Billabong at different times. In uh, Billabong first when um, uh, when Bob Hurley was running the show. What year was that? Uh, this is in the early 80s to up until the 90s until I quit and then I went to Quicksilver. And what year were you on Quicksilver? Uh, 90. I'm sorry, yeah, 90, 93, 94, 95, 96. And then Slater was already on by then. Slater was on, he jumped on board He, he in 92. So you were the other Californian, but he kind of stole the spotlight, huh? Oh, God, he's a, he was the king. He was the most, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was the king, man. And he, that was the most prized possession. Uh, for many decades prior to, that, prior to that so then you were like on the sidelines or what like you, you uh, were in the magazine describe but, the sidelines but of, you weren't like you're in this you have like editorial and you're in server magazine and stuff but there wasn't that much of you uh this is the whole uh, mom uh, momentum generation i mean i was Kelly, Ron Machado, Pat O'Connell, Taylor Knox, Jeff Duffenbaum, myself, um, Shane Stoneman. Uh, we're all in the World Amateur Championships together in, in 91. Uh, I think I got ninth. And then Kelly just got like fifth. But that whole seg uh, generation, the whole team went to excel. Um, I was like the least one to excel uh, in that in that group of surfers. I mean, Machado, he, uh, he uh, Machado, Slater, Taylor Knox, they, uh, they all excel. Jeff Jeff Ball started to excel, but I had like I was already kind of burned out by that. And I was kind of like, what you were like nineteen? <clears throat> I would say, oh, let me rephrase that. Been burned out. I was just like. It was uh, at the tour, the Debbie Quest back then. It was it was very it was exhausting. I mean, you, you went here, you went there, you, you traveled uh, extensively. I I was uh, I was just burned out just going to a couple events, just like the Virginia the Virginia Beach, Brazil, Europe. Um, uh, I spent a lot of time in Australia. But the, the setup was difficult, and the make to make money was even more difficult. Understandable. Understandable. So how did that even happen for you? Like, how did you even get hooked up on Billabong at all? Billabong was um, was owned by G Gordon Merchant. Gordon Merchant at the time, uh, Bob Hurley bought the the rights to it. <coughs> First, he would chip chip. Chip Roland. Chip Roland was too young, so he went to Bob Hurley instead. Bob Hurley, this is in the early 80s, 82, 83, started to push it into the market. Billabong. <coughs> and then, um, how did I get hooked up? The, the private investor uh, by the name of Tom Fletcher, who was really the whole the man behind the man, behind Hurley, that was Tom Fletcher. Tom Fletcher was the man, not Bob Hurley. I mean, Tom Fletcher was the, the was the money, but he was a side of partner. So um, I was Jim, who was coaching me at the time. He was the second father to me. His name is Jim All. He was the second father to me. Uh, was best friends with Tom Fletcher. Was best friends, good friends with Bob Hurley. Those two pushed me into uh, not surfing, but Billabong, and then. And Bob and I said yes, and then, and then I excelled really quickly. And then I started going. I, I couldn't surf a heat to save my life, but he's Bob's like, well, I'm gonna shape your boards. You're writing for me. This is Billabong. 
<laughs> and then I started, he sent me to, uh, I got that, the famous poster. I mean, I was sophomore year. This is when Surfing Magazine was actually a real magazine. No, it wasn't bought by ads. Oh, it was just about to be bought. You had like a window display poster in the magazine. Oh, yeah. I mean. Because I think Lasanti told me that he, you were on his wall when he was growing up. Oh, yeah, correct. So you got like really lucky. Somehow you they gave you a poster and you like kind of blew up because of this one poster. Because of this poster and there was a cut. There was this famous cutback that that's on my Instagram today. In the um, yellow with the yellow. Yeah. Plus you? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, those two kind of like set the mark. I mean, this is before the internet, obviously. This is during surfing magazine, surfer and surfer and surfing. So th that established, that poster, I mean, I was, what was I, uh, going into junior year? So you were like 16 years old. I was a little kid. And I was already going to contests all over the world. And I was like, this is kind of like, wow, wow. This is the, but once I, the funny part was, once I got on the tour, um, it was very interesting. I got the res all I wanted was the respect for my peers from the Aki. The you Bart just wanted to be approved. Approved by Aki, by Lynch, and um, should, I, should I even tell the story? I yeah. Mean, or should I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. Let's tell the story that you tell everyone. Come on. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm at J Bay. Okay. With Bart Lynch, uh, Neil Purchase Jr., Bo Emerton. People probably don't even know who that is. Bo Emerton, <laughs> Neil Purchase Jr. Aki Barton, Damien Hardiman, Richard Dog Marsh. We're all doing blow like you do. <laughs> and they're like, you know what, CC, besides Kelly, we, we respect you the most. I'm like, I'm done. What more do I need to prove? I mean, I just have the, the, the guy, this guy is in the world, r my peers, right here, right now. And you're 17 years old. Yeah. And um, as we're watching Perfect J Bay, as we're doing, <laughs> doing blow, <laughs> just. Like what are we doing? And I, guys, I even said to, I remember, I remember this vividly. I go, guys, we're going to Huntington next week. Shouldn't we just go surfing? And then we went surfing. And but didn't you always say you always tell the story about how Aki said that you surf more like Aki? Than it was in a quote. The surfers, there was a quote in Surfers and in, in Surfer Magazine. It said surfers that never made the tour. There was guys like Davey Miller. There was uh, Jason Buttonshaw. Um, a few others, but there was a quote that I, I actually have. I, I say it was in print. In print, um, that he says, "Aki serves more." Aki said, "CC serves more like me than I do," and that was like uh, quite flattering. I mean, I did obviously, and um, like you know, set my whole life still today to his style. Of well, surfing. isn't Aki like the same? You're like the same age as Aki? No, no, he's much older. I'm, Is he? I'm oh wait, he's like Tom K Tom Kern's generation. I'm, I'm fifty. I'm fifty. I thought you were 52. 51. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse All right. Me. Sorry. I, I know the I know the numbers. Okay. Um, so he must be like 59 then. TC, yeah, because he's got two kids that are in their late Or quarters. Aki. Aki is, is uh, uh, he's late 50s. He's turning into, I think he's turning 60 this year. Okay. So he, you were always looking up to them, especially when they had like the OP Pro at Huntington and stuff. Uh, I mean, we became friends. I mean, we were, uh, yeah, nothing like too close, but I mean, we, we knew each other. Were you there when, at the OP Pro, when there was like the Tom Curran and o Aki battles? The riots, the Aki. You were there, yeah, was there. watching in the stands or on uh, the beach? I was watching, but not on the beach, but I was watching, yeah, in the, uh, comment the commentator's box. Okay. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of interesting. I mean, why do they have that contest in like where it's not even that good of surf? It's it's all about making a statement. It's it's a corporation. The everything we're, we're we're in the land of corporation. This America is a corporation. Right. There's no way around that. So I mean, it's all about. At the time, I mean, there was there's only a magazine, so that to generate fanfare hoopla to generate business. I mean, that's when Main Street of Huntington Beach was quite, uh, it was it was the wild, wild west. It was the coolest thing ever to go up in, in Huntington. Now it's just like Macy's. Well, now it's blown out. Yeah, it's blown I mean, out. was there, because I went down there a while ago and it was just too crowded and too many people and it was hard to park. What was it like when you were growing up? Huntington was, was kind of iconic at one time. It was very, 
it was cool. I mean, there was Gerlach was there. He was he was a good friend. Brad Gerlach. Brad Gerlach, Gary Clisby, Scott Farnsworth was the world amateur. Clisby lost a current at the Stubbies. Um, there were some local guys that were incredible. Ron Quigley, who was part of Bill Hurley at the Billabong at the time. There was some. Uh, there was a, a lot of incredible surfers that came out of Huntington Beach, still to this day, and now it's just completely blown out of uh, proportion as far as who is who and who is what. And, uh, I mean, you're you're really good at surfing like the worst waves. Like I saw him surfing like the worst Zuma the other day, and it was like one to two foot and mushy, but he's like a pinball and he goes dun 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 dun, dun 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 and I'm like, how are you serving these little waves so good? And he's like, I'm from Huntington. That's Huntington is unfortunately the most average wave in the world and it's it's nothing to brag about, but I mean it is an average wave, but to grow up there and learn from it. But I also had you know Jim as a great instructor and Met, uh, like a mentor or teacher and how he says if you could surf the worst waves you could surf the best waves yeah. depending upon how bad you could surf the good way the bad waves you could surf the best waves even better well that's what in Kelly Slater's book he says that he's so good at surfing because he surfed the worst waves in Florida and then when he gets to go to a good wave it's easy that's that's right well put I mean I we met Kelly and I met when we were 14. He stayed at my house for a couple of years. He was magical. I mean, I saw him on the north side. I'm like, is this guy for, fucking for real? I mean, he's getting barreled on the north side when it's like a two foot day. I'm on the pier going, are you kidding me? No, no one, no one out there is doing that. I mean, he, at 14, I'm like, Kelly, we both saw, I said, I'm like, you're, you're going to do this. And yeah, it was so evident, obvious, and there's all, of, all of all, all of our generation knew it was all about him. Yeah. From the Were you jealous? No, from the Jamie George to the Petey Rockies to um, those Santa Barbara guy kids that are uh, that were very they were famous uh, at that time. Um, they we all knew you know, Kelly. The stru the, stru the the setup of the contests were atrocious back then than they are today. It was like you got the most points for riding the wave the longest. You got the most points for doing the, the, the half turns all the way to the beach, which is atrocious now. I mean, right. Who wants to see a guy do check turns all day long? I mean, if we, if we wanted to do that, we'd just go to Malibu or Zuma. Zuma's a lot harder to surf than first point. <laughs> this is all true. So then, so you, what happened with Billabong? Uh, Paul Gomez came into play. Paul, you, no one will probably know unless they're a, a generation, but people from Orange County will know, or outside of Orange County, Kyle Gomez came, started to run the show. Mark Reeder, who was an incredible team, uh, team um, uh, manager for a little long of time, managed all the kids. He left and then Paul Gomez came in and he had his, his favorites and he had his, his, his ideology on things. Well, it seems like you just gotta walk on to the team roster because of your coach. Uh, that's one way I look at it, but I, I, I mean, I, I, I got the exposure before they start before surfing, or you can just buy your ad, buy. It. So you got a few editorials that put you on the map. Yeah. And you just kind of had a like a, a name for yourself because of those editorials. To a degree. I mean, that does not happen anymore. I mean, no, that's impossible. Because there's so much oversaturation with the internet and Instagram and all that stuff that no one can even pay attention to who's who anymore. You nailed it. You nailed it. I mean, that's what happened to me because when I was a skateboarder, when I, I was actually sponsored by Hurley for skateboarding mm -hmm. and uh, stereo skateboards and stuff like that before 2008, around 2007, 2006, and all that mattered was the magazine. And if you got in the magazine, then oh, people knew king. who you were. You're a king. Yeah, you you were a king, and and the even the girls knew who you were. And uh, <laughs> this is why you liked it. And um, but then soon as like YouTube came out, it destroyed everyone. Instagram, YouTube destroyed everything. It destroyed every. But I wouldn't say it destroyed it. It just changed it. It just changed it. And then it was almost impossible to make a name for yourself. In so you were friends with Dylan Reed. I, I, I would see him Dylan from a was distance. A good friend of mine. But like 
I would see him skating, but he was a little bit like rest in peace. But I, he was a little bit uh, too cool. Oh, he's yeah, yeah, a little bit too cool. Yeah. I would see him like for years. At actually, at the first castle contest I ever went to, he did a Benihana over a, a, tr a cone, and he won the best trick event because his mom was a judge. Um, and I kickflip front boarded like a barrier or something. Yeah, I knew his dad very well. Still well didn't he dad. cut your hair or something? Dad cut hair. <laughs> Um, He's a barber, right? Dad cut, dad cut his hair. Yeah. Uh, Dylan was a good friend of mine. And then he went one direction, I went another. I mean, you're kind of dressed like him right now. That's the other way around. I mean, he dressed like you. <laughs> um, we're back to serving. But, I mean, he was one of the, the most stylish skateboarders ever, no doubt. Yeah. How did he die? He had, like, a cancer or a leukemia. Leukemia. That's yeah. right. Can you believe that was already 10 years ago? Has it really? Yeah. Almost his, eight his, years his ago. His father took it hard. I bet, dude. I mean, it was like almost like a um, James Dean type of. In a sense, that's a very good. That's a very good definition of it. I like. Yeah. I like that analogy. That's a very well put. Um, a lot of guys. There's so many guys in Huntington. They get so hooked on drugs and they take a route. They. My route's a little different. I mean, I. I, I, mean, I inherited. I, I'm, should I go into this? Yeah, let's go. In. Well, let's let's talk about Quicksilver. So you got. Kick okay, off Billabong. Quicks Quicks they didn't call it Coke Silver for, for nothing. Okay, I didn't know that. Coke Silver. Coke Silver. I mean, this was this is the 90s. I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm being quite bold. Uh, well, it was started, Quicksilver was created off drug money that was smuggled from Indonesia. You know your history. Yeah. Okay, and uh, this was the 90s. Uh, and uh, Robbie Todd... Uh, and Danny Clarkson, CC, come on board. We'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. I mean, how long was that transition? How long between? Yeah, from, Billabong and Quick. Oh, it was, they're right. They, they're neighbors. So I mean, I knew everybody in Orange County because I'm from Newport, Huntington. Because I hung out in Hi Newport more because they were just more like-minded individuals. So and then Robbie Todd, Quick, and then Robbie Todd, who was the man who was running the show there, and then D Danny Clark being the vice president, Preston being the. Um, president they're like cc come on board come on board we'll, we'll instantly pay. instantly like dude i didn't have to go very far I, mean, I, I did go to look at oxbow but I, that joel tudor wasn't kind of, he's like dude cc this is a nightmare just, just well ox so tell oxbow was like a french brand, oxbow, right? oxbow was a french band they had really cool clothes <laughs> they, they just had a really good setup and but it was short-lived it was short-lived and joel tudor was a friend of mine he's like i asked him he's like no i don't even bother he's dude. your friend of yours yeah you know he's like one of my least favorite surfers ever i mean i'm saying like just like the way his attitude is like yeah just I, so I, I haven't seen him in years so, okay i'm just uh, saying like i seen him at Velzy land and i just went in i was like i don't even want to sit next to him yeah. but uh, whatever his son rips though um anyway quicksilver <laughs> this was uh, the highlight of quicksilver and, and danny clock was running the show and he said come into my office and I came out as And you're like, what, 18 years old? Oh, dude, I was just, just, yeah. Just, just graduated high school. Not even, no, I was just about to get out. I think, no, just. Did you graduate year. high school? I did. Okay. A senior year. And he's like, yeah, come into my office. And I go to his office, he opens his drawer. I'm like, I thought I was like signing a contract. I'm like, huh, that doesn't look like a contract. What was it? So, <laughs> uh, a bag of Coke. I'm like, well, when in Rome. <laughs> on a mirror or something? I don't remember anything more on a plane. We just That's we, what you're doing with the, the owner of Quicksilver. Vice president or an owner. They're like, welcome aboard. And that's it. That's it. And but and then this is like a different time though. Like people, I like I said, this is the nineties. People don't do that anymore. Or maybe they do it I'm just I, I, in like I, a different I, closed realm. doors. Who knows? I, I yeah. don't I can't speak for anybody else. But it was like socially acceptable. Yeah, the, like I said, this is the nineties. This is the, this is this was Orange County. This is the highlight of surfing. All the surfing companies are in Orange County, are in Newport, Costa Mesa at that time. And um, this is before the Vans, before the Rukas. I mean, the Ruka was just starting. Um, Ruka didn't start till 2005. <clears throat> that's a whole other story. Anyways, I remember when it started because I saw Ed Templeton at Damn Am at the Vulcan Warehouse wearing it, and I didn't know what it was. So that's why I remember because okay. I was there and I was in but, but like weed wasn't relevant. I wasn't a weed guy. 
I wasn't a big snapped. fan. I wasn't even a, I, I, I wasn't even a drinker. I mean, I was already immersed in the occult a little bit, so I mean, uh, that's where my, my <laughs> and then I went on, and then I jumped on Quicksilver, and that lasted. Doug Silva was my partner. He's getting a lot of hype right now because he he's a coach to uh, Tony uh, Manise's, uh, uh the gentleman, the kid on tour, Manis. Oh, Seth Moniz? Seth Moniz. Who is his coach? Doug Silva? Doug Silva. Okay. Uh, who was my traveling partner, and he was, I think he smuggled coke back in the day. Was he a sur He was a surfer. Oh, yeah. He okay. was a surfer. He was, he was the best world amateur. Uh, he was one of the best world amateurs at one time, him and Kelly. It was Kelly and him. I don't even know. But anyway, I'm telling you. Okay. If you Stab Magazine, you can look at it and check it out. But anyway, he, he was at one time one of the best world am amateurs in, in, in the world. Um, he was my traveling partner, and, and then we, we part, uh, it, at that time, like I said, this is a whole different era, this, it was, I get on there, I trained all these years, I did all this, and then, you know, I go to the, my first party is with, like, Jake Spooner, Bo Emerton, the Australians, of course, because I got, I obviously like-minded individuals, I like them, we got along. And they just partied recklessly. Matt from Matt Hoy, who was a party central, Luke, Luke Egan, we just partied. I'm like, wait a second, my hind is spinning, and now I gotta surf a he? <laughs> but that's that's how that era was, the 90s and 80s. Was Ross era. Clark Jones there ever? Or oh that's my god, they don't they call him Ross Clark Cocaine. I mean, that was the same era, or he was that a little older? That is the same era, yeah. So, Ross like, Tom was, Carroll was there too. Tom Carroll was there too. Yeah. Tom Carroll, Ross Clark Jones. Uh, those guys are cool. <laughs> they're I, the the story the stories are endless with those two. Uh, and then you were just you were like a free surfer, or you were on the. Tour? I was doing the Q. Uh, okay, I, one year I, I was doing one year, I almost made the cut. I was they t this is I don't know ninety four. When there uh, was like forty four people or thirty four. Forty four. There was forty four. Yeah. And I got forty six. Oh damn. Yeah. So I was just like, but I had an incredible seed for next year. But this is right after I had that in the, the conversation with Bart Lynch and Aki at J-Bay doing below. They're like, you know. So you went to the J-Bay on a WQS? It was a WQS back then. It okay. wasn't a CT. Okay. It wasn't a, a qualifying. It was a. So there's like 100 people there. Hundreds the of people. There. I mean, there was there's so, there were so many events from Portugal to from England, Portugal, France, all the way down to Morocco. There were so many events. You could just pick one from like five, five star, four star, six star. That's what that's what they called it back then. But like I said, we were it was just fun because I was had I I was already I already had uh, my airline tickets for the, for the year and it was just like the party's on. I'm like. It's, it was absurd back then because you had this, this preconceived idea. It's like, oh, everyone's clean from the magazine. It looks, it looks so glamorous, but it's, it was complete. Far it was a complete farce, just like the rest of the world is. It's a complete lie. It's, it's. There's, n there's not one truth being told. Let alone the media. Everyone's a dirty boy. <laughs> at that time, in, at, in but I mean, like, what's Kelly doing? He's just sitting in his hotel room, like meditating or something. Like he didn't meditate back then. He was, he didn't drink while. But he didn't do. He wasn't partying with no, you guys. No, I, I wasn't partying. He was, was he? on. He, he 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 had a drive and a willpower to. He wanted to fucking win. I mean, it was so. Yeah, everybody wants to win, but they didn't go to his extreme. He was even Machado. He's. You know, was a friend of mine. He just kind of he did what he can do, but he's not gonna like steady every wave till and look at the tide charts and just like you know, you go out there, you catch the waves. You if you catch the wave, you catch the wave. There's no way around it. There's no way to beat yourself up. You not 100 percent of the time, you're your own worst enemy when it comes to competition. You're like, if you don't get the wave, you're gonna like most kids at that age will beat themselves up, and some fathers are brainwashed. Parents will, will say, Oh, you should have this, should have done that. You're like, Fuck you, dude. I mean, you're the one out there. If I didn't get the wave, I didn't get the wave. Right. I mean, it's up to the ocean. I feel, you, we know that now, but I mean, yeah. at, a, at these kids, like I try to tell these kids nowadays, I'm like, Don't, like Taro and um, 
I don't. There's no one really else in <coughs> LA County that that's of interest. I go, you know, because this girl like this is his coach. I go, you know, this girl like to explain to you not to be so hard on yourself because he just missed the cut. Oh, he did. Last year, yeah, he got same like me. They took 44. He got 46. Two, uh, I, uh, they right, right. A couple spaces off. A couple spaces off. And I mean, I beat myself up all the time about s that stuff. And I'm not even a competitive surfer or anything. I just surf for fun. And I'm still like... <laughs> the whole system nowadays... Gosh, I it, get so bummed out sometimes. Or sometimes I'm like, to what the avail? Why, why would you... I don't know. You're, you're Like I just said, you're your own worst enemy. But um, nowadays, I see the structure is completely... It's a complete farce. I mean, there's no one gets paid any money. I mean, it seems like if you do, you get the contract for like two years and it's over. Like everyone has like a shortest window. Like it's like maybe oh. five years if you're lucky. I had five years on Quicksilver, seven years with uh, Bill, uh, Hurley, Bill, Bill Bond, but Well, I mean, I was just surfing Waco last week and <laughs> Bethany Hamilton just happened to be there. And I thought she was still on Rip Curl, but she's not. And she's the most recognizable surfer in the world and she has like no sponsors. <laughs> Welcome to the surfing world. Right. Or even like Kolohe and Dino is on like some random... B, B wetsuit. Yeah, some random company. Uh, that's an, uh, an... I think it's an extension. Uh, uh, an ex I think they run the, the whole Japanese market. But still, I mean, no one in America knows what that no, is. No, no one in America. But he has Red Bulls. Red Bull is the key. For now. Yeah, for now. I mean, energy drinks didn't exist when you were growing up. Energy drinks did not exist. The Monsters, the Red Bulls, the Rockstars did not exist until much later. I mean, you just had a drink sponsor till like the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until the gentleman, uh, I mean, Kai, I mean, he has a long road ahead of him in his personal life. Uh, he has a child coming and he has a, that's a whole other story I don't want to really get into. But he his shot he pushed his shadow onto me I'm like oh, don't try to do that so what happened with so you're on quick till 96 you were probably like 24 no, I was on I was on quick sober until 97 and, but it just ran its course because I was like dude I was already done I didn't make the cut I and you were how old were this you? was yeah in 1920 21 you were that young yeah 21 22 between 19 and 22 something like that okay but this, this, when I stopped, I, I, I kind of, one year I just went out and party. The, the last, you just like, got the train, you seven, got the plane ticket and you were just having fun. Yeah. And then I lost all my sponsors the following year. And this is when the Vanderbilt friend of mine came in because I was partying in New York. I became friend, good friends with him, Jason Vanderbilt. Uh, <clears throat> establishment family. He, he's like, CC, I want to see the world you lived in. Like really? He's like, I don't have any sponsors. Like, no, don't worry about it. I'm, you know, I'm obviously there's an establishment family. Man. So it's some rich guy. Uh not even uh, wealthy. Okay. Is the word. Okay. And so he, for a whole year, we, we took, you know, we, we traveled. I saw some surfing friends. And you were surfing or just hanging out? Both. Okay. And uh, he's just like, wow, this is because I showed him the Key West like, system at the time, the tour. And he was like, wow, this is amazing, this is amazing. And he and I became very, very, very close friends, almost like brothers. And then um, a few years after that, he died of, uh, uh, what's that, what, are the, what is the, the cancer that Steve Jobs died from? I don't know. Pancreas. Okay. So you can stretch yourself, you can stretch your, your um, chemotherapy out and live a little longer. But he, he obviously had, like I said, he had these, I was already into the occult. He had these priceless collections of occult books. What's occult? Occult, only, occult just means hidden knowledge. That's all it means. That's, that's all the occult means. Okay, so it's say, esoteric hidden knowledge from the hidden ancient... Hidden from the masses. From the ancient people. From the ancient people, yeah. Okay. Um, the books, some of the books were priceless. I mean, some were written in the... So he gave you a collection of occult books. He gave me his estate at the time, and his wife tried to sue me, arranged marriage. I'm like, well, why are you trying to sue me? Do, can you not read? It says it right there. In the will. In the will. It's, that just that didn't last it, not even an hour in court. 
So, and then a gentleman wanted to buy my, this, we're, we're switching now to subjects to after my tour. So after surfing. After surfing, became friends with the Vanderbilt and the Vanderbilt friend of mine, we became close friends. <coughs> we um, became really good friends and then he died and he left me his, his estate. But more importantly, it left me a priceless collection of cold books. So I devoted my life and study to the art and practice of magic at that time. Like magic, like a rabbit in a hat? No such thing. That's a complete illusion. Magic is not, as Jimmy Page would say, magic with his incredible interview with uh, William Burroughs, magic is neither black nor white, good nor bad, but merely alive is the real deal. All depends upon one's intention. It's how to manipulate energy for your will. But for every will you do, there's a cause and effect. And that's universal law. There's no way around that. So karma. You can call it karma. I mean, there's nine universal laws. Once you know it, you'll you can live abiding, abiding. You can live in harmony. So, um, but <clears throat> I devoted my life and study to the practice of or just a few books because it takes a lifetime just to study one book. What are the books called? The uh, secret. No, no, no secrets. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I don't even, we're, we'll leave. We'll leave it at that. So okay. The you Abram can't get them on Amazon. <laughs> They're first editions. I mean, you can probably get the Abramelon. Do they have like gold like in them or anything like that? Or there are some books that shouldn't be open. Um, uh, Chris Everard, Everard who, who uh, interviewed about some of these priceless books. Some were first editions. Some, a couple were second editions. And, uh, what year are they from? That would be two were written in the third century, two, three others were written in the fourth and sixth century. So One, from the 1200s. 1200s. According like to the Gregorian calendar. Okay. This isn't the Hebrew calendar, which is a lunar can calendar. So, according to the Gregorian calendar, of course. So. Follow like the, were they from a religion or were they just no, random? These, these aren't religious. There's no religion doctrine. They're about how it's kind of very similar to the Book of the Dead. On it, they're guidelines. They're all guidelines. Well, the two that I say the most are they're basically guidelines to how to kind of clear the path because we this is all about energy and frequency, isn't it? I mean, the three Nobel Prize winners of this year said. I'll put it in su such easy layman's terms for your audience to understand. Whatever you think you see out there, it is not. It is all internal. Uh, Dr. Henry Rhodes, Henry's, I forget his name. He wrote an incredible book, he, incredible statement in this, in, in this uh, science magazine called Nature. He says, the world is immaterial. It is mental and spiritual. Live and enjoy. And I took that to heart. I'm like, this is all mental. It's all within yourself. Once you get in tap with that, the, the energy of, and of understanding how this works, it, it's your life can be the most beautiful thing in the world. So to back up events a little bit, the girlfriend at the time, oh, where were we? We, we were you got, the uh, books. You got the books and you were learning them. Okay. And, I lost the house in Huntington Beach to a forensic accountant in 09. Didn't care, didn't give a shit. Well, that, that's, you jumped forward a little bit. Uh, like, I am I bit. am jumping forward okay. a little bit. But before we left off, we were like, I got the books. The books were in New York, the place was in New York, but I also had a place in Huntington Beach <coughs> off of Brookers. But I lost the house. Then I demoted my life and studied to the practice of, of these couple books. So now- What's a male witch called? In Latin terms, or, or just in general, like a, just a magician, a sorcerer. a sorcerer. So you were like getting into sorcery, but I wasn't using it for the darts. Well, I take that back. <laughs> I was using it for my will, okay. as Crowley's expression "Do do what thy will shall be the whole law." Or was it? Or maybe that is not the expression, but um, "Do what thy will th shall be the law." Something along, along those lines. But I did it for my will. To, was it not for the benefit of all beings like yoga no not for the benefit of all human beings 
but then I lost the house in 09 and then in two and then speed up events um, I'm like because my mentor and teacher was teaching me through these translations of the books because I didn't speak some were written in Latin some were Greek some were written in Celtic what on earth can decipher that and uh, that was uh, you know six hours a day studying and immersing yourself trying to under, trying to understand this book which will take a lifetime. so you're just reading the book but you're Both. like but I mean, like, what is there to, is there a practice? Like in yoga, you practice the postures, the breathing, the meditation. Is there a practice for the sorcery? Like you're doing spells with like a wand there, and you're like cutting goat's throats or something? Like what are you doing? No, that's, that's Hollywood. Okay. Uh, there are certain times of the year, very, it's exactly like, it's, to speed up to like masonry, it's a very similar effect because you follow the course of the sun very, very closely. And signs and symbols, which are energetic, energetic uh, symbols of what is trying to be expressed. So you're looking for omens. That you could almost put it that way. It's just it's just studying how you could say the universe works, but which is the universe is inside of you. Your audience is going to know what the hell you're talking about. But it's, uh, it's uh, to understand how the cosmos work within yourself. But at the time, I didn't know that. To speed up events so people don't get bored, I took, after like 17, almost 18 years, I'm like, you know what? I got to take a break. This is, this is, this is too much. I mean, you were just studying for almost 20 years. Yeah, it's, it's just overwhelming. I mean, uh, just reading all the time. Reading and then doing certain rituals, spells. Like, what are the rituals? That's what I want to know. Like, what are they? What are they? There's, there, there. It's basically following, like I said, following the course of the sun at certain times of the year, and so it's sun worship. In, to an exact, almost to a T. Okay. To a T. You could put it that way. You could use those words. It is sun worship. And then it's not silly. It's about gathering uh, energy uh, from Mother Earth, from, from the people. And, and people will use that for their will. That wasn't my intention, but it, people can use it for their will, which is quite damaging, which we are. Here we are today. It's a pretty selfish world we're living to a degree. I mean, people are waking up. This is the age of Aquarius. The age of knowing. The age of love is amongst us. It's, I think, 75 years away, according to the lunar lunar calendar. Calendar. I mean, the cycle is about to end. <clears throat> to speed up to events, I'm going to go back a little bit. <clears throat> uh, 2015. I'm like, you know what? I got to take a break. You know, I'm going to take a break. So he and I did this elaborate ceremony over. Well, I'll be. <laughs> he was a, a, a master. Okay. <clears throat> we did this elaborate ceremonial ritual, which is the most complex about rituals of rituals, because you have to use certain words, certain times, and certain tones. So you're using mantras. You can use that word too. Okay. <clears throat> you can, that is a better word to use. <clears throat> and then. We and you're did, chanting them. In a sense. Okay. Um, in a sense, at that time. Yes, you could put it that way. <clears throat> so we did this ritual. It took it took about <clears throat> a day to do it, 12 hours, and it took two days to recover from it because it's exhausting. Because you're in a you're in, you could say a pentagram, whatever you want <laughs> you want to do. And then um, we did it like in the sand. It's a pentagram in the sand, or like you created it. I created it. Out of what? Your hand. Okay, so imaginary could, pentagram. Oh. Like, that, you could put it that like way. Like an energetic pentagram. You could put it that way. Okay. Uh, and then we did the we did it because I had this grocery list of a woman I wanted. But for every... For, a grocery list of the woman you wanted. In a sense. Okay. So, uh, but for every act, there's going to be side effects. For every magical act, there will be so severe... So for every action, there's a consequence. There's there's a, for every action, there's a reaction, but there's always going to be side effects. But at the time, I didn't really care or know about it. I just 
And he taught he, he warned me, he's like, there's gonna be side effects. And it's not always gonna turn out the way you think in your mind. Envisioned it. Envisioned it. So I, I did so we did it and then twelve hours later, uh, this girl I met in South Africa went uh, in ninety four. We I met her once. Uh, at a QS. At the Gunston five hundred in uh, What's Durban. What's that? The Gunston five hundred surfing event in South Africa, in Durban, South Africa. I met her once. This is before the internet. I left. We started writing to each other. And then she magically pops up. Uh, On your Facebook? In my, uh, after I did this invocation, ceremonial magic. <coughs> 12 hours later, she contacts me saying blah, 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 you know. She just found you randomly. Randomly. Okay. There's no such thing as random events. Okay, so there is no such from thing. the from the invocation from the ceremony, ceremony she that somehow she ended up contacting you. Yes, you can put it that way. Your dream girl. I I thought so, but it was nothing to be further from the truth. Okay. I'm speeding. I'm going ahead of myself. So. Her and I started contacting each other. Were um, at the time I didn't have any money. I, I was done. She's like, "That's not a big problem. You're coming to Africa." So I, ju I jump on the plane. I go to Africa. She bought you a ticket. She bought me a ticket. I get to Africa. It was um, a magical moment. It was like time never stopped. Uh, you had an instant connection or reconnection. There was an instant connection, but it, there was there was something off about it. There was something not right. But I, I, I just looked past it. I, I, did, I didn't think of it too closely. I was like, oh my god, wow, she's here, she's here. And she was way hot. Um, 12 hours into it, uh, we're at a hotel. There was a knock on the door. I, mean, I just got off the plane. <clears throat> Not even 12, 12 hours, I'm talking three hours. Uh, we're in a hotel, and then um, there's a knock on the door. Her husband breaks the door open. Takes out that tooth, takes out that tooth, beats the living fuck out of me. This is Africa. Anything goes. This is it's like I a white guy. He's Dutch, so yeah, he's okay. the Dutch ding dong. This is Africa. Anything goes. I, I could, this is in Newport Beach. I can call the cops. Uh, I I Skype my mother. She's like, you gotta come home. Like, you're bleeding profusely. I fly home. I get stitched up. So you're there for like a day. If that, it takes two days to get there. Fuck. And so I get stitched up. I Skype her back. And I'm going to come in on my coma-like state. She's like, you're coming back to Africa. I'm like, all right. So like a ding-dong, I fly back there. So I'm, flying, I'm in Africa again. And I approached her husband because he got us a place. I'm like, let me get this straight. I, I, I'm just going to tell you. Uh, look, I, I know you're going through a terrible divorce. You interfered in my world. I destroyed your world. You think this was a coincidence? Think again. I will be the author of your pain if you really want to dance with me. So you did a magic spell on him. Yeah. Did it work? Uh, yeah, because he went crazy. Saying so he beat you up and then you just talked to him like no big deal. In so many words. Because he got us a place. So Why would he do that? I'll get us a place? Yeah. I have no idea. He's Like I said, the spell worked, but... Things were weird. Things were uncomfortable. Okay. I was always looking over my shoulder. So I only had a three week, uh, like a 21 day visa, so I had to go back, fly back to the US, come back. <coughs> so now things are kind of weird because she had two kids, nine and 14 at the time. Uh, to show you what kind of person this guy was, the two kids loved me, they adored me. So he gives his kids, nine and 14 at the time, both a black eye. How many parents do you know do that? So anyway, now things are kind of getting weird. We're like, you know what? Let's get, let's go. Her and I fly to Bali. We only had a 21 day visa. She's about to get on a plane. We're we're, all, we're about to check in and go on the plane back to South Africa. So <laughs> the stewardess goes, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Well, I'm gonna sit next to my girlfriend." It's like, "Oh, we sold your seat. You're, you're not going anywhere." Why? 
Qatar Airlines tell that to your guitar. I ended up staying 11 months in, ba in Bali. By yourself? By myself. Not surfing, no nothing. What do you do, what do, you do in Bali without surfing? <laughs> I wasn't Wait, were you at Uluwatu or were you like in... No, I was in Depasar. That's, what a weird place to be. <laughs> I know. And um, so, um, I'm in Bali. Finally, my mom sends me money uh, after 11 months. How did you even eat food? Uh, the, the, the people that I live with, Made, uh, I became really good friends with them. Uh, they were like a second family to me. He took care of me. I, didn't, I they, were, they, were, they were vegetarian. And uh, I went to the beach and walked around. And it was nice. Wearing that fedora, you fit in. <laughs> Wearing the fedora to fit in. It's so... Um, but you weren't talking to the chick at all? No, I was Skyping her. Okay. So now... Um, I get on a plane to go back to South Africa. This is where it gets interesting. I get back on the plane. I get back to Africa. Third hour there, her father gets sick. Three days later, her father, Natasha, um, goes into a coma. Three days after that, her father dies. That's 3-3 three, three in numerology. Pay attention. After that, distraught and torn. She's in, she's in between herself. Like, I don't even know who she is. I, I'm like, who are you? I mean, I'm in South Africa. I'm like, the fuck? Are you hung out with her maybe like... 60 days or something this whole time period in a sense and then her and I fly back to Bali uh, like I said I don't even know who she is the third day third day there I'm like who are you and she's like go oh, I'm gonna she's like I'm gonna lay down just go go get me some food and um, uh, come back I go out get her a saran I come back she's sleeping I didn't think didn't think anything of it I lay down next to her, I wake up, she's ice cold. I go, oh my God, you're kidding me. I turn her over, she looks, she's purple. I do CPR on her. I pick her up, I grab her purse. I get her in the car. I get her to the ER, she's DOA. Um, but she's probably like dead for a while. I have no idea. Terrible. Um, I don't know if she had a cardiovascular problem. There were uh, some baclofen and some Valiums in her purse. That, that doesn't that, really that's kill like people, a, right? Valium? That's an antidepressant. It just, like, makes you pass out. Not even that. But she didn't, like, throw up and, sw like, no, drown no, or no, no, no. vomit? No, no. But for me, in this case, now, uh, because of my studies, I mean, death does not exist in a timeless, spaceless world. It only exists in your mind. This is all about energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed. So when she died, I was kind of taken back. But as my mentor said, you woke up only to see the rest of the world vast asleep. So she was already just in a voidless void of sleep. She was in a void, yeah. I mean. Now I start. This is when terrible. I start. I go back to surfing. I fly back to America. And what happened? Wait, you just what happened to her body? You just left it there? I, I, I'm just a boyfriend. It turned off. No, it didn't. I'm just a boyfriend. I can't do anything. The husband has to come. He came from South Africa to, to, to straighten things out. I'm just a boyfriend. I couldn't do anything. So you left like the next day or what? I left a couple days later and then I got But back. are you like super bombed or like what? Oh, I was uh, in a third world country. I'm like, where, where am I? What it's not really a third world. I know, but you get it. Yeah. Um, so I get back, and then some friends of mine, I kind of, I didn't really mourn, but I kind of like, I was like, wow, this that is. That was like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. And now, um, Cordell Miller, Carrie Hell, one of my old sponsors, they're all enticing me to go surfing. I go surfing. So you go home to OC when you don't know anything. It's like you got out of like jail or something, and it's like you're back in the OC random. And in a sense. Because you were gone, you were living in New York for a while? I was stuff? living in New York, I was living in California, but I, I cut the whole world out of my life. I, I wanted nothing to do with it. And you me. weren't on like social media or no, anything? No, no, I didn't get on social media until much, until 2018. Okay. So. Um, so then you got back to OC, <laughs> and then what? I started surfing again, and that changed everything. And then I, I came, a few years later, I came up here. How'd you end up in Oxnard? Through Joan, with Joan Bolton, we met uh, through Facebook. We became friends. We talk. I talked to her when I was with Natasha, um, because I because her energy was more my energy, and her frequency was more tuned with who I was and what I became. 
And then after um, uh, I moved up here, and it was quite immense because she's the way she goes about things, the way she thinks about things, the, the way she goes. Um, it's called religious science. So it's very similar. It's, it's right on board with white magic. I mean, it's, an, it's almost identical. But it, it's quite profound because it, it's brilliantly illustrated through self self through thinking, but it's constructively thinking, not just thinking. It seems like so much of this white magic stuff, or magic in general, there doesn't seem like there's very many daily practices. Like in yoga, we practice it, every day. You can make it that way if you want. There are certain times of year. Like Kundalini yoga seems to be a lot like white magic. Yes, agreed. Because it's about manifesting and creating and seeing your vision and expanding your vision more than you ever thought possible, but there's like practices to do, but it seems like magic is a lot of just like study and like a critical, like not critical thinking, but just like thinking about things. Like that's where I'm confused. Like I don't understand what to do. But then, then you go into ceremonies, you see there's certain times of the year. Like how many ceremonies a year are there? You can go 12 to 24. So like once, like every new moon, full moon. And it's, yeah. Okay. So you could go into detail with that and use it saying, oh, the zodiac, this is this time of year, it's gonna be this, it's a reoccurring event, the energy is stronger at this time of year. You could, you, wait, you you say you wanna to say to yourself, oh, I wanna manifest this, I wanna manifest that. So is that. it astrology based? Astrology is the only science. Astrology, astrology and astronomy are the only science. Everything is the lunar, ca the Gregorian calendar, that's, based on fictional events that's all that doesn't make that's I mean it's only 2024 years old well according to the Hebrew calendar it's 5,800 well that's a different calendar but it's lunar oh, right right that's this, what I'm saying it's yeah, two okay. different calendars yeah <clears throat> someone wanted to change uh, 2,000 years ago for this so called Gregorian calendar. Well, they wanted to change it about one person. So that never existed. Before and after. <laughs> that never existed. Very fictional. Very fictional. It reads, it looks like a fairy tale, it reads like a fairy tale, and guess what? It's a fairy tale. But it's a beautiful tale if you look. It you makes people feel yummy inside. Uh, that, that's their interpretation of it. I mean, they know nothing about uh, the allegories or the codes. Well, you just have to just do some more like a comparative research. People are too lazy. They can't do comparative research. Right. Come on, Zach. You, your audience won't even know what comparative research is. They don't know what the, uh, the, the Gita is. They don't know what the Papa Vu is or the Zenavesta. I mean, if they look at it, they're like, their story of Jesus was written in all those all three of those so all the three of those books they predate your so-called bible so <laughs> what are we what are you doing now now i am chanting <laughs> no now i'm just evolving um <clears throat> i'm surfing just you surf like every day almost yeah um surf no like every day but it, it, when, it, when it needs to be surfed when it needs to be surfed <laughs> when it needs to be surfed um, and you're coaching people. I'm sometimes. coaching kids, yeah, and um, ever evolving, just trying to uh, keep the path, keep the, my mind, my conscious clear, um, to help people really need to understand something that you know we are all one conscious, experiencing itself subjectively. We're all one. People have to learn how to be more uh, search for the truth. <coughs> find the truth within, but practice compassion, not only for themselves, but for all others. This is a very Buddhic and Hindu philosophy. Very yogic philosophy. But that, that is the way. Anything else you want to manifest? Uh, a good summer. A good summer, that's it? All right. Satnam, everyone. Satnam. That was actually pretty good. Cool. Even though I, I did all the talking. I mean, it's your interview, dude. Hey, 